Welcome to Railway Empire 2 Fundamentals. All right, hi, this is Atticon, and welcome to episode two of our Railway Empire 2 Fundamentals series. We're going to get real basic in this one and just do some basic track laying and, and just give you, show you the mechanics of how it works and also just give you some notions, just some things to think about to make your track layouts a little bit better. And I'm going to call this episode Track Layout 101 in honor of what I think was my uh, most watched video from Railway Empire. Okay, let's get right into it. All right, let's talk about putting uh, stations in a city. So you're up here, you get uh, building construction, railway buildings, train stations. Okay, now each city can have a grand total of three stations in it and that counts your competitors. So if there's a, if a couple of competitors in a city are in a, already in a city, you can join the party, but that you can only add one station. So here we've got Toledo. It's actually our capital in this one. I, I blew it up for demonstration purposes. And we can put this uh, the station in the, in the town as long as it is touching a significant portion of this green section. This green section is kind of the current town boundary. And then if you look back here, see all this red out here? If we weren't in track construction mode, it would, it would uh, well, if we were like this, and we weren't actually looking at that, see, see the white boundary? That is the expansion area for the city. And you actually can't build in that expansion area. For example, I can't place a station out here the game reserves that space for the city to grow into later. And it's useful to see that, to see how is the city going to uh, grow over time. See the pattern here for Grand Rapids, go up here and see London. Okay, so you can go anywhere in the green and you just have to have some portion. So you can stick out some, but there's a point. It's really that center of the, uh, the station building. When you, if you watch that, when it gets over the line, then we can't build. Okay, so a few things about the placement in here. For the main one I would think is make sure that you allow enough space to put all eight uh, platforms in eventually if you choose to. Remember, you're only building the first one. So let's put one right there and I'll tell you what I mean. I, um, you've got certain buildings that, that actually interfere with your building. Everything else doesn't. The town sort of morphs and changes. When you place a station, the town will adjust. <laughs> it really does. It will almost rebuild itself. But the things that won't adjust are your special buildings. This is our headquarters. That, that, that's kind of locked right there. This is a weaving mill. This is a meat industry. Those are locked in. So the industries, the three, up to three industries that have grown are in the, in the city, plus the special buildings. There are buildings that you can put in, in the city itself, like libraries and museums and universities and stuff like that. They also, see, they occupy space. And you've got to, you, you've got to set up your tracks uh, and your station so that you can run without uh, hitting those guys. So always leave yourself space for eight, even if you say, oh, I'm not going to use eight. Uh, don't fool yourself, you very well may use all eight. That's it, that's really basically it for the city. Uh, well, one other thing, I would suggest that you kind of get in the habit of thinking about, it, it's probably easier to have an organized line if you think about having your, your track kind of um, facing, uh, kind of facing in the same direction, right? So we're gonna run our track over here and if we put a third, station in we we uh, might put it there but we'd probably put it maybe over here i usually put the the uh, building side of it up against whatever building is restricting me so I, I would tend to do it like that rather than like this although that that would work too but i, I it just i tend to put my uh, station building against the building that's keeping me that, that, that is restricting me so I would tend to run them all kind of like that, so they're all running, let's call it kind of east-west, rather than, you know, one of them going this way and one of them turned and running this way or something, because then it's going to be much harder to get your track organized. So there you go. That's that's building in the station. Now, let me get rid of a couple of these. Need them. Okay, so there's our station. Now, as I build track, 
Uh, let me let me just show you. If I were to run a line like this, say I'm going out there to that uh, cattle out there. If I hit that 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 uh, platform right there, I'm not adding one platform. Look at the cost of that station platforms, three hundred fifty thousand. I'm actually doing seven more platforms because if I build that last one, it has to build all the ones up to it. So now I've activated that entire station and turned it into a mega station. And you probably don't want to do that right off the bat. Later in the game, yes, but but early in the game, money's going to be too tight if you if you're you know unless you're just playing sandbox or something. So don't don't do that. <laughs> use your the one or or a couple of them, but don't use the eighth one. Okay, and they count out from the station building. Okay, so notice, notice the price here. See, platform zero, because that one already exists. If I use that one, the platform cost is 50000 If I use that one, it's all seven. It's all, uh, you know, not counting the very first one. You already paid for that. It's all seven, okay? Now, um, okay, that's enough of that. We'll throw that away. Now, let's talk about connecting... Uh, two stations and the basic mantra I want you to learn. <laughs> this is this has helped me so much. I'm still not perfect at it because I still goof up and leave off supply depots or whatever, but this mantra will help so much. You need two points to connect. You can't just throw track down anywhere in the game. It has to connect to your existing rail railway network. So here I'm connecting two stations. They're a pretty straight shot, so I'm happy with that except for this. And we'll get into this in a minute, but I'm going to just make a little tweak to get rid of those tunnels, and we'll talk about that in a minute, as I said. So now I've got the thing. So, so I've got my two points. So what you do is figure out what two points are you connecting. You build your track. So you put down one side of it. If you double track, and, and you nearly always will. You don't have to. You can put side. You can use side tracks. You can do it. We're not going to get into all that. But we double track. And then, um, okay, once you have built your double track, then you, uh, and, oh, and let me go back. Let me go back and delete that line. That's second. Okay, when I'm in track laying mode, oh, you know what? Because I deleted it, won't let me do that. Okay, that's interesting. All right, if I go back here, I'm going to lay that track. Double track it. There we go. Now, see this right here? This is an easy way to, if I want to add another track parallel, this is parallel track. Don't think of it as double track thing, but it's parallel track. If I want to run track parallel to this one, click, and it automatically goes up there and runs parallel track for me all the way up. And I can click again, <laughs> more track. I just, it's just bang, bang, bang. So it's super convenient. Anyway, so. You lay your track, and let's say we did want four lines running between these two, that would be fine. So, pick your points, lay your track, then grab your gridiron if you're coming out of the station, and start at the, start at the uh, station and just drag it out. You don't hold it down, you just drag it. You know, I'm, I'm not holding my left mouse button down or anything, I'm just dragging this across. And then you click it, and that makes the the uh, junction you need, or the switches that you need, in order to for all these lanes to access all these lanes, right? So you do that at both ends. By the way, uh, real quickly, because I've seen comments about this, how slow it is. You don't want to be down here dragging WASD to move. When you want them to go somewhere, get up high, move, and then go back down. So, so if I want to quickly go from Toledo to uh, Grand Rapids, well, one, I could click the map and go like that, and I'm there. But if you were dragging, uh, dragging uh, track, you, you would want to uh, um, start, you know, start whatever process you're doing, go up high, then move over, and then go back down, and that's very way faster, way faster. Okay, so did I do both ends? I did both ends. So now uh, you want to set your signals. 
So you want these, you want to tell these uh, tracks which direction to go in. So I click it until this thing is kind of moving like a conveyor belt the way I want it. I'll do the next one coming back. See, I had to click it twice because it started that way. I want it to go this way. We'll do this one. That's right. That one's backwards, so we'll do it again. Okay. So there's three states it can be in. Nothing, so it's two-way track basically. Or going that, going one way, or the other way. So I've got alternating ones there. That looks good. And I've got my signals set. These are my signals. They're set. I've got the junctions or the, or the switches, whichever way you want to think of it, at both ends. Now the, the last thing to do would be to put in your go to railway buildings and get your supply towers. And on supply towers, a couple of different strategies. One is you could just throw one in the middle. That typically works. Longer lines, you might have to have multiples. Or you can think, well, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to put another one here, kind of, you know, just outside the switch, the junction. Just outside the junction, I'll put it maybe a couple of signals back so that uh, if I bring in stuff from outside, it'll be able to pick up that supply depot as it goes in. Okay, so so let's go back through that because this is the, the, the mantra you need to learn. Determine your endpoints. Lay your track. Put in your switches or your junction. Set your signals and put in your supply depots. And if you just kind of keep thinking it and then you build your line, right? Okay, so that's how you do a, a city to city connection. And you, you uh, kind of do that mantra. Now let's talk about another uh, possibility. Let's say that we were coming out of, out of Toledo here. Let me get back into track mode. Um, and we were actually going to go to a, our next uh, stop was down this way. Maybe, uh, you know, something back here, right? Where we had to, had to swoop around and turn, okay? Well, we could lay the track like this and have it go down and pick up. Let's just, let's just put a station out here. Uh, in fact, I'll just put one out here. This is, I'll just put one out here in a random spot, which you can do now. You couldn't do that in Railway Empire. You can do that in Railway Empire, too. So we could run our station, our track over here like this, and just curve it immediately out. You could even, you know, we could, whatever, whatever, right? It could be on any kind of curve. But let's say we did that, okay? And now I want to, ah, Double track, I click there. Now this is the other way you double track if you don't have that, if it can't just do it for you automatically. You wanna click your starting point. I typically click one side of my track somewhere. So I'm gonna, like, like I already did it right back there. So I, now this knows I'm trying to run on this side. And then I would go, would go up here to my track and I could do one of two things. I could either try to connect it like that or I could just go click it here and then slide it in like that and now I've got a little connection there and I can I can play with this to soften that angle to make it a little faster or whatever I wanted to do right right okay and this I call this is it's my term but I call that a point-to-point -point connection it's only using up one um, terminal by the way I would suggest if you're having a raw material brought in from a farm and the only thing it's doing is loading at that farm and going somewhere that you use this kind of thing so you're only having a really small station here with only one platform because you don't need multiple platforms okay so there we go we, we set our set our track now uh, let's build that now what what would be next we Got our point, our, our points. We have junk. We have our junctions. No, we don't. Here we do. This kind of automatically created the junction for us. Here we don't. So we get our gridiron and we go like this. Well, watch this. Look how far out we had to go in order to lay down, lay down the switches. Well, what's wrong with that? You might ask. The problem is that any trains coming down through here, maybe other lines merging or our trains from down there, the one we just built, are gonna to have to queue up to wait right here in order to get in the station. So if there's activity going on here, they would line up way back here. And then when it's their turn to go, they've got to travel all the way down there to 
to get back in, which is holding up stuff that might be coming from the other side, uh, making this whole process longer and more efficient. So, a good practice to do would be to build your track out of your stations. Now, I didn't do that here because it was relatively straight, but a good idea would be to take this and drag it out uh, something like seven, eight miles. Now, I know that seems ridiculous. Remember, it's the scaling of the game, but go out here like seven, eight miles like this, and then you can watch your speed, and if you're, if you're curving it and you're doing something funky with it, notice how the speed gets, gets lower, so you really want max if you can get it. You want to come out where you, where you see that max. And that may look like an angle to you, but I think it has to do with the way it goes back to, over there. But be that as it may, try to get your max and then you just build it. Just do a left click and, and um, have, your, have it kind of stubbed out. Build that. Go out here and come out and drag, drag track out next to it. So now I've got a kind of straight section, and then you can even test it and see if that, now look, look how short your uh, signal can be here now. So now trains coming in on this line can actually queue up right here and get into the, the ones that they want. Much better than having them queue up way down here, okay? And then what you can do, if you've overdone this part, don't worry about it, just delete this part. Right? And then if you want to, if you really want to hard, turn hard, fine. Go ahead and turn hard. You can do what you like then to go down here, right? And we can build that and we can come over here and grab this. We're going to click on this side over here. So see how it's all messed up? And we'll click here to say, okay, anchor yourself there. Then I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to... You could even just like grab it there, grab it to that point, and there you go. Now you've got now you've got a connection. Okay, so we, this this created our junction on this end because it's point to point. We already we did our grid iron on this part, so we have our connection. The next thing we would do is set our signals, make the make the track run in the right direction. Then we would do our supply tower, right? And we could put the supply tower here at kind of near the entry point in case other stuff comes in. Or one like this, maybe you would just put it right in the middle. Put the tower there, and then you build your line. So again, pick your points, lay your track, set up your switches or junctions with the gridiron or not, depending. And then set your signals, put in your supply depot, you're ready to go. So just keep doing that mantra. I actually, when you listen to some of my videos, I actually am saying that out loud each time I, I do one. And I'm doing that obviously to, to kind of reinforce that for people watching the video, but it really does help me make less mistakes. And I'm very mistake prone. And uh, that does clean it up a little bit for me. So now you can see how even though I've got a curve, I've still got a close, nice tight connection here to work efficiently. All right, um, let's move on to uh, how to deal with the topography. Okay, these maps are not always nice and flat like this and easy. There are sections like over here that are tough. In fact, right over here, let's go back to putting down our station. This one here is, we can see it, it's at the base of a very big mountain, right? Now, the easiest way, the best way to see this is actually on a PC, you would hit H, don't know what you'd do on a console, but we would toggle it like this. So now we're looking at the grid view, or the contour lines view. If you've never used contour lines, they work like this. See how steep it is up here? See how close together the contour lines are, okay? As it comes down, they slowly come apart as the steepness wears off, if you will, to get down here to where it's relatively flat. They're kind of spread out. You get down over here, it's very flat because there's, see how the distance between the contour lines? Okay, so we want, what would, what I think you should do in this, never build it like up here, like uh, you would not want to build a, a station up here like that, even though it would let you. 
And even though that would work, look what you've done. <laughs> you've created, you've created this. Well, you know, you can't fall off there, right? So, so don't, so stay away from those slopes. And the way you do that is to take your, take your station and come down, uh, come down as low as you can. You want as low level of playing field as you can get, so to speak. And then get in the habit of saying, okay, well, rather than going against the line, so I'm gonna come out of that top part of that station. That's my plan. Well, do not build it where it just it, right? You see it kind of, you can almost see it digging into the earth, right? Light it up kind of in line with those things as far down as you can get it. And then try to have that first one. I, I usually, I don't know why, I usually have my building face, you know, with its back to the uh, whatever I'm chip, whatever it is I'm chipping. But line it up so that that first, particularly that first platform, is coming out in alignment with these with these uh, grid lines. So it's not crossing two grid lines. So right down here would be a really good place. Okay, and then you can build your track out like this and see how that, see it's not. See how we're not getting ridiculous uh, slopes as we come out, even if we curve it. Um, we're, the only time or reason, main reason we're losing speed there, is just because of the curve. It's not because of the of the uh, terrain. So get in the habit of doing that. All right, how do we deal with terrain? Say we wanted to have a, a line that went maybe from uh, from here, coming out of the edge of Toledo. So we click on. Sorry. So we click on here and we want to come out like this. And we're going over here and we want to hook into this line. This line that's going from Jackson Stop to London, right? Well, look right here. We've got this big old mountain in our way. Well, first of all, you always want the straightest, shortest track you can get. That's the fastest route you can have. But at the same time, <laughs> we've got that big old mountain. So. What we can do is come over here and say, okay, we've decided we want to join in with this right up in here. So when you're coming up to merge, let's talk about merges. If you'll click it and anchor it, every time you click it, you're setting an anchor. You're saying, okay, the track is going there. Notice how it, it's always going to be part, that's going to be part of the track. Okay, so then we can pull it up here and we can go in to merge. And you can merge with the inner or the outer line. If there's multiple lines, you can actually go over there and merge if you want to. But um, the thing I usually do here is think about well, what's my outside line because you want to make sure that you don't put a curve in there that would make it too tight to build the rest of your track. So I usually do, if I'm coming this way and going like that, I would probably connect to the inside line first and decide where am I going to put that. I want to maintain my speed and all that good stuff. So maybe there would be a good place. I'm going to click that, but I'm not going to build it yet. I'm going to come back and look at it and say, whoa, whoa, 1.5 million? I don't think so. You know, what, what happened? Let's, I'm going to hit H, which toggles contour lines. Now I can see my contour lines. One thing you can think about is go away from the mountain. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to drag it away from the mountain. All right? So if we just drag it away from the mountain, that usually helps. And I can I can go here, hover over that point, or, or this point, and left click it, and that took that anchor point away. So now the anchor point is here, right? So we dragged it out away from the mountain. So it's looking a little bit better. We're getting most of the slope out. We've still got that giant tunnel, and we've got an area here that we can't even build. So if we go over here, hover over this, and I'm, I'm using my mouse button and I'm just scrolling it and watching the, the track come up and see what's happening. See how we have the tunnel just magically disappearing. And I've got two tunnels left, so I've, I've got a couple options I could drag. Like I could, look, I just clicked on it, and just by barely moving that, it got rid of all that slope. So now, oh, okay, we still got one here. And you can see, you see how this is getting getting a little slope into it, right? There's a little rise right here, probably a little hill. 
Well, we can click on this and maybe move it off that hill a little bit. And maybe click on it a little bit to raise it up and look at that. Look at that. Zero, one one percent, zero, zero. It's almost perfectly flat track. And, and the biggest thing is it says max speed all the way. So this track will not slow our trains down and we can go at max speed. So remember to deal with this, just kind of go away from the mountain, go down, seek the flat earth, so to speak, and then tweak it, try to get rid of bridges and tunnels if you can. It's perfectly okay to have bridges and tunnels because at the end of the day, the speed is the most important thing. You really want to be able to have that max speed and you want minimal grades on it. And we could probably work on this some more, maybe get it perfectly flat, but I would be very happy with that track if, if I were playing this as a real scenario. So we would build that side, that's one point. Now, to double track it, we go back here to the connection and see the cones. These are intersection points with this track. If I go to that far one and then click it, that anchors it down there. And then if I wanna drag it out, see how, it's, see how it's got the red? That means we can't do that. But if we go over here and say, okay, I really wanna be a double track to that. See it turn white, so I'm gonna click it that's going to anchor it and say, okay, we're running this track over here on this side of that. I can come up here and scroll down to my other end. And I can go cl click it down here and say, hold on, buddy. And, and then have it come down here. And there's another uh, intersection point there right at the, uh, um, what we call that, the gridiron thing. And then I click that and look what I've done. I've created double track on the other side, much cheaper than the original track because parallel tracks are cheaper than the original track and then we can do build and now we've got a nice connection there are we done no of course not we have what have we done we've identified our two points that we're connecting we've created our junctions right by doing this we've created the junction so we've got junctions on both ends now what do we do next we do our signals so we click that and we drive on the right or left, whichever you prefer. And then we say, okay, let's do our signals, railway buildings, supply depot. And you might want to own something like this. You might put a couple down. We would put them maybe here and uh, here, here or whatever. There you go. And, and now you can build your line from Toledo to London or out to that or whatever it is you were trying to do. Okay, so that's how you deal with slopes. You just kind of get away from them, find, seek the flat ground, and then tweak it uh, to make keep your max speed, minimize the uh, inclination, the elevation changes, and try to avoid tunnels and bridges if possible. There you go. That's track that's track laying in Railway Empire Two. I don't know how it could be simpler. It works. It works very very well. Uh, I think some of us are missing our setting the signals ourselves, but, but honestly, this is a beautiful system. It works very nicely, and uh, the trains seem to run just fine. And uh, there you go. That's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it will help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe, and join us for our next video.